Hello, everyone. Welcome back. Today, I'm going to be talking about the laws of logarithms. So one thing before we just get into the laws of logarithms is that the laws of logarithms are basically the exact same thing as the exponent laws, right? Because all exponents are, they're all very closely related to logarithms because the uh, inverse of the exponential function is the logarithmic function, right? Whether it's a parent function, whether it's a different type, whenever we take the inverse of an exponential function, we get a logarithmic function. Or something at least that can be written in terms of a logarithmic function. Awesome. So let's move on. Let's just take a quick look at these laws. So here are the three laws. This one's basically saying if we have an exponent here, we can put it out in front. This one's saying if we add these two, we can multiply. And this one's saying if we subtract these two, we can divide, right? And so that's those look very, very similar to me to the exponent laws. And that's because they are essentially exponent laws, uh, laws just kind of switched around to work for logarithms specifically. So here they're asking us to write each logarithm in the form r, r log with a base a to x. So for this one, all we do is we just put the exponent at the front and then rewrite everything else, same as before. Same with this one. The square just comes to the front in the form of a coefficient and we write everything else the same. And same with this one. Just like that. So we're basically, we're just using exponent law one three different times to write each logarithm in a different format. Okay, what about two? For this one, we're multiplying two things. They want us to, or dividing two things, they want us to write this as a sum or difference of logarithms. So for this one, since we're multiplying, this would be a sum of logarithms. So logarithm with a base 5, 25, plus logarithm with a base 5, 16. This one would be logarithm with a base 4, 16, plus logarithm with a base 4 of 256, right? So we're just using this first, or sorry, this second law for these ones. And then for these ones over here, we would use the second one, or sorry, the third one. So this one would be log with base 8, 10, minus log with a base 8, uh, 3, like that, right? Based on this one here, this third, um, this I almost said exponent exponent law with this third logarithmic law. And then this fourth one here, same thing, right? Log 20 minus log 7. And there we go. Now they want us to do the opposite. They want us to use those same laws, but to express these as a single logarithm. So we're going to use the same laws, but this time we're going to go backwards. So for this one here, since we're adding two logarithms together with the same base, we multiply 81 and 9. And I believe we get, you know, I think it's 7 something. One second. 81 times 9 is, yep, 729. So logarithm with a base 3 of 729. And there we go. Then for this one, it's going to be, it's a difference of logarithms of the same base. So we divide. So then we get logarithm base four, two, like that. And then for our third one, we're first, remember order of operations, we're first gonna find a single logarithm with the logarithms in the brackets. Ooh. So this one I'll just leave as is. And then these ones in brackets. And then we're going to have And then we're going to end up with 16, like that. Okay, so yeah, so there we go. We basically, in this one, we used the uh, that logarithm law twice. First, for this part, to say, oh, well, we have 
logarithm with the two logarithms with the same base with 16 and 4. So it's 16 divided by 4, which is 4. And then it was 64 divided by 4 for the second part, right? So whenever we subtract, we divide, as it says in the, uh, the logarithm law. All right, let's try this one here. Here it says to evaluate the following logarithmic expression. So before we evaluate them, I'm going to use some of these laws in order to make it into one logarithm first, and then I'm going to evaluate after that. So for this first one, I'm first going to combine these two by doing 5 times 125, which is going to get me to 625. Like that and then that's going to be equal to we're subtracting so we divide right and then we have logarithm with the base 5 25 like that and then we can evaluate it 5 to the power of what is 25 well 5 to the power of 2 is 25 and so there we go so we can do it that way, right? We can use our, our, our logarithm laws to find it. Or what else we can do is we don't have to use our logarithm laws. We can also just evaluate each part of it as well. So let's try that with this next one here. 2 to the power of what is 64? Uh, well, let's think about that. I need a moment to think about that. What would that be? Let's see, well, it's four to the power of three is 64. So that means four to the power, or sorry, two to the power of six would be, um, would be this one. So therefore it's six, right? Two to the power of six gives us 64 minus, okay, what's um, two to the power of what is uh, 32? Well, two to the power of five is 32. And then two to the power of what is four? Well, two to the power of two equals four. So then we have one plus two, which is three. So that's another way we can do it is we can actually just um, evaluate each logarithm um, apart and then, you know, and then just add or subtract what we need to after that. So either way works, right? Whether we want to use those laws first or whether we want to just go right into it. All right, so let's do this one. Let's do this one with the first method where we use our logarithm laws first to say this would be 81. And then this one, actually, this one's tricky. It's 81, not 18, sorry, 81. And then divided by, divided by 1 over 9. Which, recall, if we divide by 1 over 9, that's the same as multiplying by 9. Right? That's the same as 81 times 9, which is 729. Okay? And then 3 to the power of what is 729? Well, let's see. I believe it's 6. It is. Okay. So therefore, our answer would just be 6. Now we also, if we'd wanted, we could have, we also could have done them separately and said, oh, well, three to the power of what is 81? Well, that'd be four. And then three to the power of what is one nine? Well, let's think about that. That would be negative, negative two. So then we get six that way. So that's another way to do it. That's perfectly fine as well. All right, let's try this one. For this one, we're going to combine these all into a single logarithm like that. And then let's simplify that to get to here. Okay, so four to the power of what equals eight? Well, there's no whole number that, that that's gonna work for. However, if we take the square root of four, we can get two and two to the power of three is eight. So the answer here would be 3 over 2, right? Because we're square rooting the 4 first, and then we're cubing it, right? And so 3 over 2, or 1 and a half, is going to be our answer here for this one. Awesome. 
All right, number five says, write each expression as a single logarithm. Okay, so to do that, what are we going to do? We are first going to use the very first logarithm law that we have and put our powers, you know, put our coefficients as our powers. like that. Okay, then let's evaluate those um, exponents. And remember uh, that the exponent to the power of one third, that's the same as the cube root. So cube root of 125 is five, right? Okay, and then minus log 20. Okay, and now let's combine these into one. We're gonna get log 400 times five divided by 20. And then let's see, what's 400 times 5? That's going to be 2,000 over 20. We cancel those out. We get 200 over 2, which is log 100, which is 2. Although they didn't say to uh, evaluate, they just said to write each as a single logarithm. So we could actually stop here at log 100. But log 100, for the record, would just be 2 because 10 squared is 100, right? So we could, but we can stop there though. It just wanted us to write as a single expression. Okay, let's try this one here. So same thing as before. We're just going to do 64 and then we will use that logarithm law to make this to the power of a half. Plus, let's see, this the same logarithm law to make this to the 1 fourth and then minus log 416, okay. And then what is 64 to the power of a half? Well, remember, a power of a half is the same as the square root. So therefore, what's the square root of 64? It's 8. And then what's the quarter root of 64? Um, that would be... Hmm. That would be... Would it be 2? I don't think so, no. Oh no, sorry, the quarter root of 16, not 64. My apologies. Because no, the quarter root of 64 wouldn't have been 2, but the quarter root of 16 is 2, right? Like that. And there we go. Okay, 8 times 2 over 16 equals log with a base 4, 16 over 16, which is log with a base 4, 1, which I, you know, would have been 0, right? 4 to the power of 0 is 1. So if we were asked to evaluate this, the answer would be 0, but we actually get to stop there. Okay, so let's do one last one. Example 6. Use the properties of logs to express log with a base 6 of the square root of x cubed y squared over z in terms of log with a base 6x, log with a base 6y, and log with a base 6z. Okay, so to do that, first of all, I'm going to take the square root sign and I'm going to change it to power of 1 half. Okay, so if we're changing that to power of a half, what's that really the same as? That's really the same as a half out in front is our coefficient, right? So I'm just going to rewrite it like this. Oh, sorry, no, no root sign because, because we got rid of that, we exchanged it for a half at the front, right, as our coefficient. Okay, now let's separate these into three separate logarithms with our other two logarithm laws. like that, right? And then what are we going to do next? Uh, we're going to have to, um, we're gonna have to expand it in, in order to get what we want here. So let's do that. We're gonna end up with one half log with the base six cubed plus a half like that. Okay, so we, we, um, we use our distributive property to distribute the one half through, 
And then now we're going to take everything back to the powers again. Okay, so then we're going to end up with, uh, let's see, 3 over 2 log like that. Right, I put the 3 and I put it over here. For this one, it's going to be 2 over 2 like that. And then for Z, it's just going to be the same thing as before. And then 2 over 2 is the same as 1, so I'm just going to erase that. And there we have it. Now we have it in terms of the log with the base 6. X is separate from Y is separate from Z. And we're good. We're good. All right. Well, that is it for today. Good work today, everyone. And I will see everyone next day. Bye, everyone.